The subject of this masterclass is one that we've been excited about for some time and for two reasons. First, this is something that many of you have been asking for and as if that wasn't important enough, this week we're dealing with a fascinating subject that is connected to almost every aspect of designing, building and managing a website. So buckle up and start your engine because this masterclass we're taking on issues of speed. No matter whether we're selling products, services, ideas, or generating awareness, the speed of our website is the speed of our business. Speed is something that is always on our minds, not just when we're designing and building sites, but when we're maintaining and managing our sites too. Speed concerns each and every one of us, no matter what our level of experience is. And we would sincerely love nothing more than to cover as much as possible in one fantastic masterclass. But you've got to admit that it would be somewhat ironic if we published a masterclass devoted to speed that also ran several hours long. Instead, we're setting aside what we consider to be genuine expert material for a future separate masterclass for expert level developers and web builders. Meanwhile, we're bringing you a two-part masterclass chock full of information and insight with everything else, which is a lot in its own right. We'll understand the journey that our site data takes en route to the user. We'll examine the points along this route that can potentially slow down our load time and the solutions that we can adopt in order to avoid these pitfalls and accelerate our load speed and, of course, the best ways to test our site speed. This week, we'll be examining a breakdown of the journey, focusing on the information's point of origin and explore ways to speed up our load time server side. Because as individuals, we don't normally have the capacity needed to serve data to countless users simultaneously and keep it all safe and secure, we usually entrust our website data to a host. Now this host allocates a server for our needs and the reason that we call it a server is because it works kind of like a server in a restaurant. A user wanting to see our site will use a browser, sometimes referred to as the client in this sense, to contact our server. And the moment that this happens, the whole process kicks into action. What the user sends through their client is a request, technically known as an HTTP request. In return, our faithful server replies with a responding message that contains HTML. That's the information telling the client how to organize and display all the content of our site, as well as instructions for the client to issue further requests for content assets that also belong to the website that the client didn't previously know about. Hence, we get a series of rapid requests and responses going back and forth like a super fast game of ping pong. The amount of time that it takes from the moment a client sends an instance of data as a ping till the moment a pong is received back is the way that we measure speed. As web builders, we are responsible for the return journey and the time that it takes for a user to receive their reply. Along this return journey, we have a couple of stations. Having received and processed the request from the client, our data sits out from the server via the platform, which in our case is WordPress and all the plugins installed on it. Then it continues to the system where the client is operating to be rendered into the content that our user is curious to see. Google and their counterparts measure the time it takes from that very first ping until that very last piece of data is rendered to complete the page on the client side where the user can see it as page load time. Page load time is an important criteria for search engines as their users look to them to provide a list of sites with the best user experience possible. And we don't have to be Google to know how impatient a user can get just waiting for a page to load. So it shouldn't surprise us to learn that the faster a page loads, the higher the ranking of that page will be in the search results, the higher the potential will have for traffic to come flowing to our site. So how do we make this happen? 
Let's look at the things that can slow our sight down and how to fix them, starting with our first station along our journey, the server. The first thing we need to address is the location of the server. As a rule, keep your users close and your data closer. If you want to start a fast food business and your clients are predominantly from New York, establishing your restaurant in Los Angeles will not be good business. Instead, you should move it as close as possible to where your client base is located. The big hosting companies have servers located on every continent. And it's up to us to ask our host to be located as close to our users as possible. Another way to cut the travel distance is by using content delivery networks, or CDNs. These are caches situated along the road between the client and the server that store static content assets, such as text, graphics, etc., that we have no reason to change so that the client doesn't have to wait too long to receive the data that we're shipping. Again, this is something that we need to ask from our hosting service. Now, once our server receives a request for data, it processes it. Think of our server placing an order with a short order cook in the back kitchen. If we want our order to be out fast and with no hiccups, we need a fast, reliable kitchen staff, or in our case, effective and efficient server software. Now, there are many host services that still run on software stacks that include Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Without going into too much technical detail, what we want to do is make sure that the host service that we work with is or can upgrade our server stack software from Apache to Nginx, from MySQL to MariaDB, and make sure that our PHP version is at least PHP 7. In some cases, this alone can reduce our page load time by up to 50%. Now, generally speaking, hosting services keep our data on shared servers. In other words, we're sharing the storage space and some of the service with other websites residing in the same storage system as we are. Now, some experts maintain that this too is something that can impair our page load time and recommend opting for a virtual private server or VPS. The thing about using a VPS is that it also means a lot of work for us, the moderators. Worse, if we're not experts in such things, we're putting our site and our business at an unnecessary risk. Yes, you could improve your page load time using a VPS, but as many experts will tell you, there are several premium hosting servers that are WordPress dedicated, like SiteGround, WP Engine, and Flywheel, already providing great service so that we don't have to deal with the headache and the hassle. Having grasped how users get our data, how the client communicates with our server, and the ways that we can improve and speed up this communication, next Masterclass will be pushing the pedal to the metal and see how we can speed up the flow of data even more by modifying our WordPress platform and our content footprint. We'll also be taking a site that we'll audit to show how all of these tips and advice work in practice. If you have any further advice, tips, or insight that could help other users speed up their websites, please share it in the comments below. If you have any criticisms, we are equally interested in your thoughts. And if you've enjoyed this masterclass and you found it helpful, insightful, or inspiring, make sure that you click the subscribe button and tap that bell so that you don't miss out on our next masterclass, part two of our masterclass on accelerating our page load speed. After all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Thanks for watching. Cheers.